Take a look at my enormous pumpkin. <laughs> and you just, just will do it. I thought you were going to sing the actual song and I was a bit... I, I was firstly confused. I was like, what is that going to do with this season? <laughs> but then I was more horrified. That, like, are you really going to say that word at the, at the no. top of the video? This might be someone's favourite season of Doctor Who because they tuned in to watch just this one and you were going to open it with... No, I wasn't. A big old phallus. No, I wasn't. But instead, you brought a pumpkin. Which is uh, worth sticking around for, I'm sure. Welcome to Doctor Who Review with Chris. And not Chris. It's a podcast, kind of. We're sort of envisioned, because it's just fun to do it this way. A visual podcast. Visual podcast. Um, of a man and a lady who were married, and the lady over two years ago went, let's binge watch Doctor Who from the start. And the man went, all right. Hey. Are you sure? Me, me. And uh, here we are, here we up are. to season 21. 700 million thousand. In the middle of, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, in the middle of, collectively, I turned into Shaggy halfway through that sentence, in the middle of, like, in the middle of, collectively, our least favourite era of the show so I far. I will not correct you because you were already correct. Yeah. I, I, as I said in the season... 19 video I I hadn't seen all of Peter Davison but what I had seen I wasn't bowled over there were some stories I'd seen that I really liked most of which are in this season um Ooh, and then the rest of it I hadn't really seen and the thing that put me off was sort of the TARDIS team I wasn't a big fan of like Nissa being just being there yeah. um Tegan for the majority of her time not wanting to be there and Adric being there way too much um we got through that season. We got through season 20. Uh, there's been some stories that we've both really, really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, I think 20 had more more hits than misses, didn't it? Overall, for us, like in terms of what we were watching, we were like, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like yeah. The Black Guardian trilogy was a bit of a slog, but there's some good yeah. ideas yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, The Return of the Mara was Oof. great. Yeah. The, the Return of Omega was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, Return of the Master and... Uh, and, and uh, King's Demons was really fun. Yeah, it was. King's Demons um, was very good. And then obviously... Apart from the end, because uh, it's friggin' terrifying. Well, we'll get to him. He's on the table. Uh, and then, of course, we got The Five Doctors, which I absolutely adore. Uh, it's it's so much fun and stupid and and isn't really that great objectively, but sod it, it's a good time. So makes me happy. And Paddy was in it, so you were instantly Paddy. happy. Okay. And Jamie was in it. Very, very briefly. It wasn't Jamie, that was it. Oh. Yeah. an illusion. Yeah, but he looked dashing in his kilt and his frills. <laughs> Good to your help. Um, oh, careful, Peter. Careful, Peter, no. Peter. So we start season 21 with... So we've just come from a really strong season and we've just had the five Doctors. What a great time we've had. And now we're up to Warriors of the Deep. So continuing last year's tradition, this brings back old foes, old enemies of the Doctor. Two, two versions of the same enemy that both appeared in the John Pertwee era. My God, yes, praise be to John and the unit era. Yay. We've got the, we've got the Silurians, Silurians and the Sea Devil um, the counterparts sea of the Silurians. Sea Devils. Both redesigned Sorry. subtly. Well, no, the Silurians are redesigned subtly. They just get a bit of a more of a, bro a, bro a bronzy green paint the job. The Silurians get the lips done. Yeah, then there's that. They look like this gawking and smiling for the whole story. It looks weird. And the sea devils, we see a version of the sea devils where they're sort of like in armor and their fins aren't like spread out. They're sort of almost tucked into the collar of the pretty cool armor design, but it just it, their if, necks were really long because that's where the heads of the costume wearers it was, it were. Was weird. It, 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 it's they really needed to be those designs from the neck down. Need from the collar down needed to be saved for a different alien. Yeah, yeah. it just didn't work. But worries the deep. Uh, so the basic plot is the Doctor Tegan and Turlo um, end up on a submarine uh, underwater base, essentially that is then attacked. Uh, which is which is all Cold War stuff. One of many Cold War Doctor Who stories that apparently set on submarines. See 2013's Cold War. Um, the one with the Ice Warrior and uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, the wonderful... Um, oh, my God. What's his name? What's the actor? He's bloody brilliant. David Summer. Thewlis. No, but he's also bloody brilliant. Oh, David Thewlis, I don't think he's uh, ever going to no, go I'm, to I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the guy who's in uh, Time Bandits. David Warner. 
Sure. Yeah. Uh, a Doctor P from the Gentleman movie. Uh, <clears throat> voice of Rachel Ghoul. Uh, no, you won't call I, I have a memory like a sieve. That's true. Um, well, David. that one's literally sitting in the Cold War on a submarine. In this one, there are essentially Russian spies, kind of. So there's an, an intrigue story. There's some great ideas in it about, like, people perform certain functions on this underwater base slash vehicle, like, with sort of chips that are in their heads and stuff. So, uh, like, so there's one guy who's in charge of the missiles, and it's all a sabotage <laughs> thing. But they get... Uh, they, end, they end up confronting this... Silorian Sea Devil cr uh, cruiser, and it turns out the Silorian that's like the evil Silorian plotting to destroy humanity using humanity's own weapons, etc., etc., is one from the Pertwee story. But because they're designed so heavily differently, so they're designed, they're designed so ham fistedly differently, that it doesn't read that it's him. No. And it's weird that they just sort of accept that, oh, we've met before, did we? Well, that doesn't matter. It's like, have you met before, though? I mean, John was trying to help them. Yeah. Why? Do, well, I think this was the guy who was doing the uprising, the one who was, who was like, no, we'll kill humans no matter what. But it, it's that whole thing of... No, yeah. It's that whole thing as well of, like, there are alien species in the show, bad guys and good guys alike, who met the Doctor before, they meet them in a regenerated form and just go, all right. It's like, no, oh. stop for a second and be like, how yeah. did you... Mm. How does this happen? You, you're not him. You know, it's, I don't know. I'm not a fan then. Um... Um, is it, I am not entirely it sure is if it, I watched this. You did. You definitely did. Because what is the name of the creature? The Merker. This is the show that had the shot in it that Michael Grade basically uh, decided to pull the trigger. Uh, <laughs> where the, the doctor who's a, a, a double agent, she like karate fights. Whoa. She like roundhouse kicks this thing in the neck. And it has no impact because there's no reaction sounds or shot or reaction from the monster. Look, if you saw a giant monster, like a slug dragon thing coming towards you... Which looks great until you realise its mouth isn't moving and you're like, what the hell's happening? It looks great from the front and then you look from the side or behind and it's like, oh. <laughs> oh, they ran out of budget from the deck down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you saw a giant monster like that coming, would your first thought be, oh, I'm going to kick it? No, especially because you know that everyone who has touched it has died because that's yeah. how it kills people yeah, yeah. it's skin is toxic but also massive corridor run away yeah you were next to a corner run around the corner ah. don't kick it in the neck unless you're 100 percent positive that you're either gonna knock its head off or you're gonna like wind it no don't do it the cliffhanger to ep one or two was great where tegan's trapped under the rubble as the murker is emerging into the room and it looks oh, like the yeah. Doctor and Tegan are going to die. But like, it's a really well done cliffhanger. It's like, oh yeah. shoot! Oh, it's the one with the dog demon in, isn't it? Is it? Dog demon? Yeah, the, that monster thing that comes... No? What are you talking about? Dog that, demon? Yeah, that one... That, that It's got glowing red eyes. No. No, there's definitely a story. And it, and it, and it's, it turns out to be a good guy. Is that a line about the bombs? It's got the... nothing to do with this. Have we already talked about that? I can't remember at this point. I'm just baffled that you've created a new monster. Do you know monster. what? I just, I, this was so boring. I, haven't, I don't know if I even watched it. Was I rolling across the floor begging you to stop? I first watched this one. <laughs> that sounds awful. I didn't read a letter. Back in like 2007, 2008 when I got the Beneath the Surface box set. And I watched Doctor Who and the Silurians. I was like, this is great. I watched Doctor Who and the Sea Devils. And I was like, What's this, this is... Called? Excellent. And then I watched Warriors from the Deep. Warriors of the Deep and I was like Warriors of the Deep? Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, it's if you if you watch these three these three Silurian stories the way I did, this is hands down the worst, so it's a terrible climax to the story. Like it's really, really, really bad. And is the last oh. use of the Silurians and, and the Sea Devils in the classic series. Oh, it's so, not the one I'm thinking of, I don't think. But isn't it weird how they're like, let's bring back these monsters that obviously have stayed in people's, you know, imaginations from like over ten years ago. And then just sort of do them dirty like this. The whole first episode where it just keeps cutting back to the Silorians waking the sea devil warriors, and it's like just why can't so why not just wrong. reveal them in a cliffhanger at the end of episode one? They'd be like, Oh shit, there's reptiles involved. Do you know what I mean? It's ugh, not a fan. Was never a fan. I'm still not a fan of Warriors of the Deep. Sorry, yeah, I completely switched off. Watching this, I'm afraid. But you didn't for... 
The Awakening. What happened in The Awakening, Maggie? Oh my god, I found a gif of the woman kicking it in the face. <laughs> oh my god, I actually have. This is incredible. Do we show it? Really quickly, because we're trying to keep this concise. <laughs> Ah, dear. I could include a clip, but I'm not going to. Go on, kick it. Kick it. Because at first, she goes... Yeah, I oh, she, goes I like, oh. she goes like, oh, for no reason. It's so bad. It's, it's really such a, funny. It's such a bad story. Um, there's some gung-ho weapon usage in it, and Turlo gets a bit bloodthirsty, but whatever. Oh, what please. happens in The Awakening? I have a clue. You are kidding me! Oh, my God. I never promised that I would pay attention. Oh, the awakening, the face in the church. They arrive on a place because they're getting a sense of something, aren't they? The TARDIS can sense something. Mm. And what's going on in the village that they arrive in? Uh, th oh, I can't remember. It's oh, like, it's the war. It's like it? a reenactment. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And some um, people are way, way into, into it. Way into it, yeah. Um, yeah. It's also, oh no, they go there originally because it's where Tegan's... Grandfather is. Grandfather, she wants yeah. to see her grandfather. But they can sense that something's wrong. Yeah. Um, because nobody's seen the grandfather, and people are and sort people of well, are really uh, ushering it away. It. Except yeah, for yeah. like one, she's like a teacher or something. She's yeah, the one who's yeah. kind of like, "This is a load of bollocks." And they're like, "What are you talking about? Shut up. You don't want to be the." She, she was could. really good in that. And there's the whole basically, um, I can't, they can't really call it, don't call it this, but it's the whole like sort of like you're going to be the sacrifice queen of the festival yeah, or yeah, some shit, like the, the virgin or whatever. Um, bloody hell, taken. Um, and oh, which eventually. Tegan gets sort of roped yeah, into that role. And, and like pieces of history are like slipping through into the the, the now times. Including a young man who's just like, Oh, blow me, governor! Oh, um, what's going on? Oh, that's a picture of the devil! It'll be a chum 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 Christmas! Um, no. So, um, yeah. And there's something in this church that's like dilapidated, isn't it? I think, was mm. it... A, was it <clears throat> attack during the war or something and they've never they've never yeah it's never been touched up but there's a crack in the wall that keeps forming and it's been it's yeah. been here since the time of the battle reenactments that they're they're referencing like and they there's like a myth of something and yeah, the myth the is it is on the Ma murder Ma it begins with an m there's way too much malice malice there's way too many m villains at the know, moment geez. it's really strange um it's on like the podium isn't it where the priest would stand yeah there's like engravings of this creature it's um, something at the devil, something yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah. a fallen angel, yeah. something at a playful spirit, and, a trickster. Uh, a giant face appears in the wall. Yeah, it turns out whatever the malice is, or was, was something that crashed to Earth centuries ago and has been basically slowly building up the psychic energy to give itself life again. And it's kind of starting to form. And the face in the wall, like that design. That's really cool. It's amazing. It looks a little bit like something you'd see in like Halloween Horror Nights. Or uh, Jim Henson's The Storyteller. Oh, it looks like the little red goblins from The Storyteller about the thief. And the... No, I'll have to watch that. Sorry. Well, we, have, we have the whole I'm thing very upstairs on DVD. Today, apparently. It's bloody good. In fact, I'll, um, I'll, look up a, I'll look up a picture of it now and you, I mean, you in, explain parts of the story. In the episode. Uh, where do they go? Because the grand they do find the grandfather, don't they? It's like yeah. if you touch it or or something, you 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 kind of end up in another period of time. Is that right? There's a whole thing with the basement, like and being locked in the basement of the the church, and that was sort of like a secret spot because where the TARDIS gets hidden. Yeah, and stays and they safe. They do eventually find her grandfather, um, but like ghosts appear almost from different periods of time. And their costumes, they actually look like ghosts. Yeah. Um, so these, these, are little, these are the gremlin goblin things from the storyteller story. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, the malice kind of has Bloody that same hell. sort of face. Yeah, it does. That same kind of... Oh, creep. Rick just grin. We are totally binging that this week then. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Yeah, they're all, I've never even heard of they're that. All, oh, it was amazing. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, that's amazing. I can't wait for you to see it. But um, I can't really John Hurt's in every episode. John Hurt. John Hurt with a big old prosthetic nose. <gasps> I love um, that. Future Doctor. Um, so yeah, essentially, it's your pagan cult story meets LARPing. I guess, like it, it's. It's all kind of to do with May Day and stuff, it, isn't it? It kind of feels like a less metal sequel to the Demons. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. Right down to there being a, like a maypole at yeah. one point. Yeah. It's fun. I'd seen it before. I enjoyed it. 
Um, uh, how many episodes was it? Two? Four episodes. Was it I, think four? One. I think it's a four episode. Uh, no, two episodes. You're yeah, right. I thought yeah, so. Two it, episodes. It, it, it was one of those where it's kind of like, oh, I wish it was three, just so we I could think we said that, thing. didn't we? Like, yeah, we if there'd have been one more, more, they could have indulged in it. Um, but you could but absolutely, yeah, okay. you could absolutely cut it down to a forty-five minute format and it work well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be a bit more concise with your information. Yeah. But Peter's it, very it, good I think in they this. Rushed it at he the absolutely end. leads this. He's he's very. Yeah. You know, he's on it. He's dashing around all crickety crick cricket. Um, yeah, I don't really understand what happened, but I liked it. Then, the only one I had not seen Can I see the from the series, the Frontios. With its weirdly off-colour spine, because we get to that point now where some of the spines are weird colours. But from Dios, who's a little specs. Uh, he... Uh, what happens in <clears throat> is drawn to the service of um, There's the doomed colony members. So there's, like, the guy who tries to patch them up, the Doctor and that, and they've got, like, the old, the old uh, like, fusion engine and things like that. And essentially it's a human colony that's arrived on this planetoid and has had to survive for a few generations with like seemingly no before. hope of getting off there. It's... But but the weird kind of semi-fascistic regime has begun where there's like the one guy in charge and he's the son of the previous guy who's in charge. And he's very sort of strict and authoritarian. It's like, oh, Jesus, okay, this has got a bit out of hand. Doesn't really know how to lead, but thinks he does. Yeah, meanwhile, the Earth is swallowing people. Um... Although we don't, we don't see that till later that it's literally the earth is like dragging people underneath. We think that people are going missing or being eaten or exploded because shortly after the guys arrive, the TARDIS has gone. It exploded. Uh, seemingly. Well, it turns out it did. Yes, the only it gets thing dispersed. Left is a hat stand. Which, I'm sorry, is freaking brilliant mm. because immediately they convince everybody because it's believed that they're like spies for a di from a different colony or yeah, other off world. From the people that they think is attacking them. Because yeah, yeah, because they believe they're at war when really no, the threat is directly under their feet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna have to try and get their names because they also, I'm pretty sure, have an M name, but I'm probably wrong. Um, well, the Gravis is is one of them. A bunch of white guys. No, 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 the, no, the big wormy um, slug guys. Oh, the slug guys. Because it turns out the enemy is beneath them uh, the whole time, uh, stealing people away and doing what they will with them. Yeah, taking their kind of, like, not their brain, but their knowledge and stuff. Well, partially their brain, when we learn that they need the will and the imagination of a, of a species to survive and thrive. It's something they don't have. They have, like, telekinetic power, but they don't That's have... Bizarre. They don't have that... Uh, tractators, that's what they're called. They don't have that... Um, that th they don't have the one thing that's missing, which essentially is a u imagination, uh, uh, you know, to innovate. <laughs> so... Which is because they're so cold and logical and they've bred from such a singular life form. Because you find out the history of Frontios and the fact that they were these... Um, no, I'm getting confused. <gasps> I'm getting massively confused. I'm thinking of the slug things that are in the backstory of the Twin Dilemma. Because that's also like, oh, there were these slug things and they evolved to do this, that, and the other. But that's with the cave paintings on the wall. Whereas in this, it's just like, oh, these things have been here for ages. Yeah, yeah. The reason why... Ah, the reason why they've I'm getting... They've got like confused, a lab and everything. Yeah, the reason why... Yeah, and they've got like the, the former leader's corpse, mm. like, strung up into basically what looks like a war a machine. Really, yeah. Just like... Like a Davros kind of thing. Yeah, it's horrible. I think, a dead know, man's tank. I think we both said at the same time, it kind of looked like Voyage of the Damned. With um, uh, Max, the whatever his name is, the 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 the, bibli the billionaire who's behind the Titanic ship and everything, and his head's just like sticking out of that cabinet on wheels. Um, I don't remember that. We said it at the top of the isn't it? In Voyage of the Dam, Doctor Who. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought you. What am I thinking of? I'm not sure. I don't know. But um, the reason why I, I thought then, hang on, there's a history of them, is because there is, because this is the one where we finally actually learn a little summon summon about Turlo. Mm. Two stories this series go, oh, Turlo, shit, we've not really explained anything about him other than he's not originally from Earth. Um, here you go. The Tractators were essentially a, a real threat on his planet and thousands of people lost their lives because a similar takeover began to happen yep. in several uh, countries and, and, and whatnot on his home world. Um, so... And he was... Uh, Turlock kind of slips into a, a trauma fugue state. He was arrested, wasn't he? Um, oh, we learned that's later. Oh, sorry. We learned about that later. But sorry, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> it's easy to get some of the stories mixed up in this series because there's lots of nothing happening. Um, but yeah, it, it's... Uh, 
effectively, Turlo's like, I think I know how to beat them. The Doctor's very quick-witted. Uh, dreams, nightmares, horrors, thoughts. And yeah, um, um, it's one of two slug-like enemies in the series, which is a weird thought, really. Although these guys sort of look like uh, Will Smith's character like, from Shark Tale. Yeah, God, they do. They're like a caterpillar. Like, meets a... There you go, same thing. Yeah. Um, the Doctor is actually a doctor. Yes, for some of he it. does doctory things. Um, um, there's some genuinely creepy scenes. There's a weird subplot that pops up and then kind of is just there for function, where one of the, the slightly more rebellious members of the group who's trying to sort of overthrow the leader a bit in ways where you're like, yeah, that makes sense, you should do that, really, because the guy's being a dick. Mm. Um... He's like a chosen one. Yeah, he he doesn't get sucked under the earth because of some of the doctor does like while he's down there that disrupts it all. So he's seen as like you have been chosen, like you're special, you can fight the enemies. No, wrong story. You're merging two stories with the series together. No, so you no you no no you're merging two stories from the series together. This is how bored you were this series. So. This is the guy who nearly gets dragged under the ground. He starts to fade, then he doesn't. Then everyone's like, oh my god, like, you've been spared. You've got to lead us. Because they start going down into the tunnels. Because the, the elder scientist who like helps them out when they first arrive, his daughter's all tied up in it all as well. Is it the one where... Um, so like like they're going down in the tunnels to confront yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, tractators The one where they, they block off the lab. Yeah. Because at the beginning there's a crash and part of it's destroyed or something. So they... Wait. Wow. Understand. Lucy really loved this you story, didn't, guys. You got confused as well, sir. I like Frontios. Yeah, at the beginning. It was my first time watching it, I would watch it again. It, it's um, Cedric Diggory's dad's in it, isn't it? That's the one with him, isn't it? He, he's the leader, who, the original guy's son. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's no spaceship crash at the beginning. No, I didn't say a spaceship crash. I said something crashed into their lab. So they... they they cut off the lab. No, I'm thinking of smiles. You're merging other stories. Wow. No, I don't think We've I got am. to that point, guys. We need to move on to a new doctor. I don't think I am. We need to move on to a new doctor. This ear is melting her brain. Wait. Or, or, I don't know. or, maybe, you'll just need to crack into the good shit this series. Resurrection of the Daleks. 1984. London sort of warehouses, streets in London, secluded area. Dudes from a different space time are escaping from people that look like police officers who are shooting them all dead. Uh, there is something bigger at play here. Time corridors are being fecked around with. And all in aid of this rebel group to jump onto a prison ship, which is currently like sort of being inspected by one of the most senior officers in a story. And we only say this because it just sort of is so shocking whenever it happens because you just suddenly realise, oh God, yeah, a story that is full of actors of different ethnicities. Mm, and it's good. Took a while. Yeah, but like, it's, just, it's just weird, isn't it? Because you sort of go, oh, shoot, yeah. God, this is a very white show, isn't it? No, that's, like, that's until, until a, it gets to certain that's stories been a where something. Where, like, yeah. uh, most of the Dalek stories are just. A tribe of white people on this... Blonde white people. Blonde, in gorgeous togas. white people. Yeah. So it was nice to have a... A more diverse a, cast. Yeah, a visually yeah. diverse cast. But also... A more realistic the first, cast. The first completely not Terry Nation Dalek story. And that'll be why. Uh, no, that's got nothing to do with the casting. No, but no, no, what you mean is the similarities. It's all different, yeah. Because yeah. Genesis of the Daleks was the last one that was completely him. And it was like, oh, if that's your last one, Amazing, because what a great one. Amazing. Mm. Then Destiny, which is credited to him, but is absolutely a butchering of ideas of his and Douglas Adams's and a yeah. lot of editing and just doesn't really work. Yeah. This, this really works. Mm. This really works. Because uh, you've got uh, humans working with the Dalek factions. Because once again, following on from Destiny of the Daleks, the Daleks are an impasse. Theirs and the Mavellan supercomputers, like, the, the impasse element is still continuing. The Daleks don't know what the hell to do in their ongoing war. So they go for their original creator again, who is now not only in suspended animation, though conscious, conscious the entire yeah. time, which yeah. is creepy, um, in this prison ship, but also 
played by a new actor, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Malloy takes over the role of Davros with a new chair, new cosy, new more chair. importantly, a new mask that mm. is designed for him and starts to really push Davros toward the like the more mon- the more monstrous sort of sci-fi villain uh, looking design. Yeah. Um, he looks great. It's good, isn't it? It's a yeah. good look. And what did you think of Terry Malloy in the story? I thought he was amazing. I, he, I think he, he plays is, him like a monster. He is Davros. He plays him like a monster. Like yeah. the, the 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 quiet sort of waiting to explode sinisterness of Michael Wish is not there. Mm. But there's el- well, it's, it, that's not what he's gone for. But there are elements of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's obviously not taking anything from Goodison. I mean, for, for starters, when he moves, it doesn't look like he's scurrying around. So that helps. Um, it doesn't look like he's on a wheelie chair. Yeah, well, I mean, even though he is, but he doesn't look like <laughs> it, yeah. Um, Davros is great, and basically he, he's broken out, and he immediately understands his Daleks need him, which means they are not as superior as he thought they were, because mm. they are still failing. Then he so finds he, out there's been a, a war. Even though he participated in trying to fix their supercomputer the last time we saw him, it's like, and there was you like know a, there's there was a like, war, there like, like what's a, going on? a virus that wiped out the Daleks. Supercomputer. And, and he was... Yeah. He was pissed. <laughs> She's like, right, so we need to protect against that. But also, I need to make them better. Mm-hmm. But also, I know full well that they're just using me for repairs, and then they're going to discard yeah. me. Yeah. So Davros whips out his patented mind control injection kit, uh, which is never really explained, but considering it's old tech, I sort of assume it's like nano genes or something. It's like, you know, once they're, once they're injected, it's basically like part of their head, their brain is rewritten so that they if- follow his, his instructions. If you were, like, supposed to watch over a criminal, yeah. like, a genocidal criminal, yeah, I wouldn't go near him. True. I would have my weapon pointed at him the whole time. He's in a wheelchair thing. Everything you just said out of context sounds horrible. I'd have my weapon pointed at him at all times. He's in a wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair, so, like, he's not going anywhere fast. Mm, I don't know. Know, I don't know. You saw him in Destiny, right? Um, that's true that was a straight corridor this is a round room <laughs> true he's not going... banging into any surfaces in this one <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no I touched the biscuit <laughs> um, <laughs> well they're all yours now that's no, the logical I don't want them I'm not really a big fan well then why have you polished off of them off well oh, because they were there that's the worst excuse I ever no that's why um, I'm fat <laughs> what did you think <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> What did you think of the Daleks in this story? Uh, malicious, mean. Um, I thought they Scary. Looked... <laughs> I thought they looked... Skin could curdle dairy. <laughs> Violence-wise, their hands are not the cleanest. Um, what well, you thought they looked... Because they're mostly the they're mostly the the, the, the gunmetal grey design from Genesis, but there's a bit of variation now. You've got yeah. a lighter tone to some of them. Yeah. Um, the voices are... Mwah, chef's kish. Yeah. Kish. Chef's Kish. What on earth did you just say? Sean Connery rating. Chef's Chef's Kish. Did you say Chef's Kiss? Yeah, but I said Chef's Kish. Chef's um, <laughs> Yeah, I thought they looked great. And they sounded great. And they are just murdering people. Murdering. Highest body count of any classic Who story. And possibly any Who story, actually. Uh, highest on-screen body count. Because you've got What's his face with his men shooting people left and right. You've got brainwashed army um, and police officers, like, killing people now you have the professor yeah, like, the, 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 the scientist lady who tr- tries to aid Tegan in getting out and then she gets herself murderized as well yeah they try and um, convince guards that a little capsule in a blanket was Tegan yeah <laughs> oh, but you're right yeah, they're not brainwashed they are clones because yeah. the Daleks have perfected cloning mm. To use in, in essentially uh, planting people in situations where the power struggle, power vacuum can be changed for their benefit, uh, including a guy who's a clone who is, uh, interestingly, gets a really interesting bit where like he's the one who's essentially going to uh, take the Doctor's DNA so he can be cloned and then kill him, because the Daleks' plan for the Doctor is they've already got clones of Tegan and Turlow, and they're going to send a clone of the Doctor with them to Gallifrey because the the, the, the Gallifreyans, the Time Lords, will be like, why have you come on your own? What's going on? So they've already made clones of his companions who are just basically like empty vessels at this point waiting to be turned on to go on this mission yeah. so that the ruse will be sold enough so that the Daleks can then like attack Gallifrey. Um, 
But this guy, like, he's a clone, but he starts to, like, fight against the programming. He realises it's the influence of, like, the cloning process and the Daleks. And he can fight past it just enough to help them. But it also is not helped by the fact that he's a terrible fucking actor. Yeah. Like, he, when he's suddenly Strange. revealed to be a baddie, he's not. When he, when that but, reveal well, happens, you're like, oh, yeah. he was pretending to be a bad actor. Just, just to show that drastic change in... Yeah. In it, but... No. But then he carries on. It's like, oh, look. Oh, you're still. No! And all that stuff. Like, what are you doing, mate? Oh, Come man. on. Um, uh, bad I'm about a terrible football. actor, but I could do it better than him. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the other character, the guy who's in this one. Oh, my God, it'll come to me. But there's a guy There's a guy who's in this story uh, who's like the. He's, he's also a clone and he's the head of the, the sort of the task force working with the Daleks because they needed that strategy to be like, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, this mm. and that. Um, so Davros' plan is to use uh, brainwashed agents and then two brainwashed Daleks to basically create a new Dalek strain all for himself. Um, so he can improve them and they will listen to him. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Daleks start to cotton on and lots of death and shooting and people lots dying. Lots of shooting. So much death and shooting. He's got a shooter. That Tegan goes, it isn't fun anymore. Standing in a warehouse full of exploded Daleks and dead army men and all this. And she leaves. She does. But you went, really? You kind of knew she was going, but like... I knew she was going because you said this one had the highest body count. And you said that she... We'd send it another time. Tegan leaves because she basically was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. So you put two and two together. Yeah. Like she's going to leave yeah. in Resurrection. Um, how did you feel about her going? Because you'd, um, you'd warmed up to her a lot yeah, more this series. Yeah, I had. She was, out of the three, of her, Nyssa and Turlo, uh, Tegan was better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she got a little less whiny. A little bit. Just a I little lost bit. my job. Let's go backpacking. Yeah. My dream was to be an air hostess, but I got fired. Never mind. We're not going to talk about how that happened. Yeah, they never touch on it, do they? No. Edric's dead. Bye. He won't want, want us to mourn necess unnecessarily. Um, yes, he would. The Doctor's really taken aback by it. He is. He goes to run after her, but Turlo holds him back. And then... <sighs> and he's like, they... oh God, it's just me and you, Turlo. And then after they dematerialise, she runs back in. She says to herself, Braveheart Tegan. Braveheart Tegan. Realises they've gone. Stood there in a warehouse. Filled with the corpses of Daleks and cloned men yeah, left, right, and centre. I'm not left standing. I'm going to be arrested for Every, murder. Everybody's dead. Everybody's Meanwhile, dead. they they leave a uh, they leave a, a thread. Lytton, played by Maurice Colburn, the 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 clone who's like the, the head of the operation, Mommy. manages to get out, get back to modern day Earth, and bugger off disguised as a policeman. So, to be continued. Yes. Anyway, if the dog will stop interrupting now. Can't see. Minnie. Sorry, she's cleaning my face. Right. That just for that. You have to summarise Planet of Fire. <laughs> Maybe you can start it without me. Nope. <laughs> I've done all four of these ones. You're doing this one. What happened to Planet of Fire? I can't remember. What? I can't remember. Chameleon hacks into the TARDIS for some reason and starts to screw with things and everything goes off course. So, the TARDIS is taken to uh, a spot in, like, Morocco where an archaeologist dude has just uncovered a strange artefact from the ocean and sends his stepdaughter, Perry, off into a tizzy because she's getting pissy about it and really annoyed. Because she um, wants to leave. She wants to go and have an adventure. In, yeah. Where does she want to go? She, she just wants to tour. She's like, I'm going to go around, I'm going to bugger off around Europe for three months. Um, she's screwed over. She's not able to get hold of her passport. He's doing it to annoy her. She ends up uh, uh, near drowning and Turlo takes her back into the TARDIS to resuscitate her whilst the Doctor tries to investigate what the hell's going yeah, on. Turlo rescues her. Yeah, Turlo gets his kit off. And Perry's introduced mostly with her kit off. Yeah. And they're shooting on location. Yeah. They shoot on location for a lot of the story. Like, the, the same location doubles up as the Earth location and the alien planet's exterior. Yeah, exterior. And it looks good. It looks damn fine. Makes you feel bad for the two actors who had to walk around in full suits. One with face paint, but... Anyway. Um, 
so while they're trying to figure out exactly what's going on, the TARDIS, once the Doctor gets back, sets off again, this time on the trail of the signal from this thing going back to the planet of origin. And you realise that this has all been a clever ruse. Someone has hacked into Chameleon, someone who apparently has had the ability to do that at any time, and has purposely sent them here because there is uh, a flame beneath uh, the planet of fire, beneath the civilization. Uh, a flame that can rejuvenate, restore, and grant essentially immortality and godlike strength and endurance. Um, so while the Doctor and Turlo kind of explore the area, uh, they learn that the people here and their entire religion may have evolved or intertwined with a crashed prison ship from a few um, generations prior, or a few. You know, so it's like it's like a few years, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Sorry, not a few generations prior, but like their civilization is kind of shaken by the idea because, I mean, certain people apparently fill certain roles of leadership. Um, the main, the main sort of guy in charge, talking to the younger one, he was great. He had a lot of gravitas and he was clearly yeah. having a ball playing the role. It was he was very definitely theatrical. a theatrical actor. Yeah, but not in like an off-putting way. In like, a, all right, I'm listening. I'm here. He's got the room. He's got, he's got the chops. Um, turns out, the prison ship this all originated from. May or may not have been piloted and crushed by Turlo's father. Uh, Turlo himself was a prisoner. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And this is where we learn about the, the mark, the tattoo, which he and the, the future leader both share. Um, the, he's like, the, the, that makes him like the chosen one. Yeah, when in reality it's, no, this is a prison branding. Yeah. So you learn that Turlo, the reason why Turlo went to Earth was literally to hide out, because he was a criminal. Yeah, it was like civil war, wasn't it? Yeah, he... he, he Committed some war atrocities that he. No, no, it wasn't war atrocities, was it? It was like. Yeah, it was. Had, we had two seasons of he, having to put up with him. Yeah. He, uh, hey! There it hey is. There it is. Um, he had, like, his family had certain opinions, didn't they? Hmm. And. Um, Political unrest, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and they got arrested because of that. Yeah. I guess. And then. Hmm. And then All I know is Turlo steps up in this story mm -hmm. and tries to save the damn day, and it's the most interesting thing they've given Mark Strickson to play with since he arrived in the show. From the look of it, it's very un just because we've never seen him be like this. Yeah, and it sucks, because after the end of the story, I'm like, can he stick around now and do more stories like this? I won't go that far. All right. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, but yeah, who's controlling Chameleon? A, a robot who can be swayed by a, a strong will entering into its... Into a strong its wind. Data bank, data banks. A tiny master! Yeah, well, the master is, is getting up to mischief. Um, so Chameleon takes the form of the master in a suit for some reason, which is what this figure is, which has always kind of annoyed me because I love the sculpt of this figure because it's Anthony Ainley, and it looks amazing, but it's technically a chameleon figure. Um, where is he in his big puffy sleeves panto outfit, please? I'd like that figure. Thank you very much. I quite like that one. I like it too, but it's, it's chameleon. I want a figure of the master. <laughs> Yes. But he also ends up half looking like uh, when Chameleon's sort of trying to fight back a bit, he looks like Perry's stepdad, but like silver and silver, robotic. Silver, yeah, yeah. Because um, Perry, of course, gets out there. Essentially, she spends a lot of this story fending off a, chame a master possessed chameleon yeah. and doing a damn fine job of yeah, like. Yeah, she does a really good job. Of fending uh, thinking him off, but she's the one who she finds. Likes trying to, she, she persuades the uh, chameleon to come out, you know, like. Mm. <clears throat> it's like it's fight like, through the master's will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, because we then learn the reason any of this has happened to our, our main crew is because it was all like set up so that they would get to this planet to accidentally or willingly for, forced to free the master mm -hmm. because he's been. I love this. So the last time we saw him was the five doctors, and the last time before that was the king's, king's demons. demons. King's, king's demons. Not demons sorry. Uh, what happened to him at the end of that one? He got, like, trapped in a fire. No. No. Nope. Wrong. That's this one. <laughs> uh, I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but well, However that ended, he was then sent back to that moment at the end of the Five Doctors. Everyone's returned to the time and place they were taken from at the end of the Five Doctors. Yeah. So he's on the floor and he just vanishes. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's, he's been free enough to get up to mischiefs and he's been experimenting with his tissue compression technology essentially trying to create a more deadly version of the tissue compression eliminator. So this, is this isn't a big, grand scheme he's been up to. He's been just trying to create a nastier, personalised pocket weapon. And in doing so, has shrunken himself. It backfired. 
So when Perry goes into his TARDIS, which is like a black version of the TARDIS interior, which looked really cool. Yeah. Like red backlighting and everything. She finds a box on the floor and she opens it. It's a laboratory that he's obviously constructed to work in. It's very clever. So that he can broadcast his will out into the time-space continuum, into Chameleon, to facilitate everything and get them all here so that he can eventually get it to this flame that's beneath the people, beneath the city. Because there's a whole thing in this where there's a flame that will kill people. That It's like the red flame will kill, the blue flame is the, the power or whatever. Yeah. And and there's so so many near sacrifice moments in this. It's horrible. Mm. Like the Master is loving but Like, it makes sense that he's so bloodthirsty in this because he's trapped in a tiny box somewhere watching it through the remote-controlled robot he's, he's performing as, basically. She's like, yeah, kill them all! Go for it! Kill them! Throw them into the flame! See if I give a shit. What it's a it's psycho. Ainley's having a blast in this one. He is. He's also probably sweating his teats off in that suit in Morocco, but uh, you can't tell. Um, uh-huh. And as we get to the end of our story, uh, Turlo leaves. He leaves to go and essentially like reconnect with his people because well, because like they send out a distress signal, don't they, to finally yeah. learn where the ship was, and they come to claim them, like to reclaim the prisoners, or as it turns out, the two of them that are left. And effectively, they're like, like you let off. It says like the the war, the like the civil war between war's the over, is, mate. is over. So dab, dab, he's technically dab, not a political prisoner anymore. Prisoner anymore. Yeah. So he goes off home. It's like oh, I mean shit. the fact that he escaped and ran off. You know they're not too fussed about. <laughs> no, they don't care about that. But yeah, but um, Perry. Perry kind of she adapts to the situation very well. Mm. Like she's very confused. But she knows that she's kind of, to get through it, she's got to get on with it and adapt super quick. It's the murker. And then and then the doctor's like, all right, let's take you home. And she's like, mm. Well, I'd said I was going to be away for three months, so... I'd like to not. She's not even Australian. Even though my stepdad is dead. Why are you Australian? I don't know, because she's American. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, doctor. What do you think of uh, Tolo's exit? Like, the fact that he leaves in the story. It sort of feels like the... The feels, right story for him yeah, to go in. It does. And it, I know obviously... It you, was a good story. You really didn't it. like him, but this story is the one which makes me go, I wish he'd stuck around if they had given him more stuff like this. No. Um, but as it happens, fun. not a bad way to bow out. No, one of the, one of the better a, companion yeah. exits, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's an not, actual not reason. Quite, not quite the green death. Because he, he always wanted to go home, didn't he? Um, yeah, well, well, he always wanted to not be stuck on Earth. He yeah, wanted to I get guess. free, and ho- we find out in this that no, home is where he would prefer to be, but he can't go back there. Yeah, and but he, now um, he can, and and he does what he wants to do, which I think is is really good and refreshing after last week, where it was mm-hmm. everyone's dead and I hate it. I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going to stay where everybody died. And probably get arrested. So the Doctor and Perry adventure forth. And arrive on Androzani Minor. Not to be confused with Androzani Major, where business is going on. Corrupt uh, politicians are doing shady business deals with incredibly corrupt like real estate developers and technology moguls who monologue to camera and have a forehead the size of the moon. Um, and who nearly made me regret growing out my hair in a ponytail. Because I was like, if I, ever guess, that's how I think I told you, I said, if I ever look like that, cut all my hair off. Yeah, Do you really need to remind what happens in this story? Yeah, I've couldn't This is the best story in the series. It is the best story. They get there to find uh, that effectively there are military patrolling uh, the caverns in search of a known criminal who has gotten hold of a supply of what the hell's it called? Oh my god, what the hell's it called? Spectrox. Um, which is a Essentially, a youth restorative. The rich and the powerful use it to stay youthful and and, and uh, virile, and it's made from uh, sort of the, the milk of these the, the 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 egg sacs of these like bats that are... oh bats isn't it yeah oh no that's the cure no 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 it's it's oh. a different species isn't it but it's these egg sacs is what it's made from, uh, but it has to be massively filtered because if you come into contact with it before the filtration, you can contract spectrox toxemia. How do you remember this? Because it's such a great name, Spectrox Toxemia. It's like, what the hell? That actually which sounds like a genuine thing. Breaks, which essentially starts breaking out as a rash, leads to like tired bones, 
leads to exhaustion and then eventually just kills you. Like your body starts to function less and you die. Yeah. Perry and the Doctor come into contact with this material very early in the adventure and learn as they go on that they are going to die. Mm. And the only known cure for this is impossible to get. Mm. And we don't even know if it works yet. Yeah. Sorry. Because nobody can get to it. Or because, if they can get to it, they can't get back out. Because they find out from uh, another prisoner of, of, the, uh, of the, the villain, uh, who we'd already seen in the story, turns out it was an android, because the villain in this is skilled at making android replacements. The villain is Shara's Jack. Um, who there's no good guys in this. No, there are no good guys in this. Everyone's a bad guy. Sharaz Jack's the villain of the story, but he is a villain because he wants to get revenge on the business dude, who is also a villain. Who's also a villain. Meanwhile, our like commander, um, General Chelak, like, is doing everything for the right reasons, but is so horribly misinformed that our heroes mm. are put in danger. Yeah. So much so, the cliffhanger of episode one is them being shot and executed by a firing squad. Firing squad, yeah. Your face during that setup was wonderful. Well, you was, were gawking was sh- at the screen like, I was shocked, no. because this is a friggin' kids show. Yeah, yeah. Put the hoods on been, I would have been very disturbed, and I would have been terrified as a kid. Especially because the very last thing you see before the credits roll is the guns opening fire. Exactly. And they are like proper guns. They're not like laser guns. There's like, there's like a bla- yeah. there's like blast light and everything. And as so the next story begins, sure the word, as the next episode begins, uh, f- flash fire? Flash. As, the next, as the next muzzle, muzzle fire? Muzzle nah, flash? It's a bit flash. As the next episode begins, we learn that, yeah, they were shot to death. Except it wasn't the Doctor and Perry. At some point from them being taken from the cell to the firing squad... They were replaced by androids, Android. by Shara's Jack. He wants to keep them around because he wants to keep the Doctor, a, a similar genius mind to his own, around for conversation. Mm-hmm. And he wants to keep Perry around... Because she's beautiful. Because she's fit, basically. He's like, you're fit, I want to keep you around. I, I, I was wanna... laughing at the dog, not the scenario. And it kind of, it's, it's really creepy. You said, like, God's a bit pervy, isn't it? A bit creepy. And I was like, what does it remind you of? You were fucking with the, the opera. opera. I was like, yep. I mean, look, and even at the his, mask. look at his mask, for yeah. Christ's sake. Because Shara's Jack was uh, grievously wounded and uh, and maimed and disfigured uh, during, like, was it the mud, the mud rush or whatever it is? Like, there's these times of the caves. Because there's loads of shit going on in these yeah. caves. Like, there's a monster from the lower levels, this carnivorous thing that emerges once in a million bloody weeks and chomps down on people. <laughs> and we see it, like, once, kind of. And it is like, oh, that's impressive. We can use it again. Not really. Um... And he got he got burned in one of these mud rushes, and then you've also got these pirates who've been sent down on behalf of the businessman to oversee certain deals to obtain more uh, spectrox off of Shara's Jack. And it's there's so much going on. Shara's Shara Jack's androids look like Power Rangers minions, and I don't mean that as an insult. Like they're a really well designed yeah, simple are. robot yeah. mask, and like a light. In their face, just like... there, when it scans, because it's like yeah. it, it, it scans when the Doctor and Perry are trapped in the lab. It's uh, they're programmed to kill uh, anything, human, anything any... human that leaves the lab. Yeah. So the Doctor takes the risk because he's like, well, I'm going to die anyway. So let's see. And he goes out, and of course, you see the light in the mask, which is a really great visual. Scans him, realizes he's not human, and doesn't do anything. So he goes around the back of it, like turns it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like brilliant. That's really clever. Um, Shara's Jack is great. Yeah. He's so creepy. It made me feel really uncomfortable, but I think that was entirely the point. Yeah. yeah, he's meant to make you go, "Oh Jesus," because you don't like. Of course, this thing toward Perry is creepy, but it's never like, "And then I'm going to have children with you," and that like, it's just, "I want to keep you around." You remind me of beauty. I don't know what beauty is anymore. I'm a horrible monster, and all I stare at all day are robots and circuits. Like I, that I need yeah. Doesn't make it doesn't that. make it any less creepy about how possessive and intrusive he is. But mm. like, it's 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 at least refreshing that it's not like you will be my bride. It's it's, it's I mean, more when he picks I, her up. Yeah. Oh, well, there's definitely a lot of visual imagery. This is the best directed story since probably uh, the Leisure Hive. Yeah. The one with the arms. Yeah, and the, yeah, ah! yeah. Like this is the first one since then that's really experimented with how the show can look, mm-hmm. and it's Graham Harper's directorial debut, uh, who directs more stories going forward and is the one director to direct uh, in this run, um, and uh, in the modern era as well. Directs Ooh. a load of tenant episodes. That's good. So. Good on you, Graham Harper. He was also, I, I, only, I found this out when we were watching this, I just read a bit of trivia. He's one of the faces of the other incarnations of the Doctor in the Brain of Morbius. 
Because really? he, he was working on like with the with the you know the units and the studio and everything before Unit? this. Uh huh. Okay. But it means that he's one of the incarnations of the Doctor technically. So no well done, Graham Harper. Nice. He does a great job. Uh, we have some really creepy shots. Like you get lots of nice mirroring visual imagery. You get lots of shots you wouldn't normally have. Like when the execution's about to begin, the Doctor and Perry are facing each other, and on reflection, you realise that's the androids. They've already been replaced because they were just standing so still and looking at each other. And you think maybe they're just kind of taking a moment to be like. But no, nope, they're just androids waiting to be told to go outside and put the bag on their heads and just like, oh my god. The best part is when the Doctor's Androzani Major and he gets on the ship and he commandeers it after being their hostage whilst he's dying. Like, he's dying much quicker than Perry is. Like, Perry's symptoms hit her all at once, like, yeah. toward the end, but the Doctor is, like, gradually weakening. Um, we finally learn what the celery's for. Yeah. He's allergic to certain types of toxin in the environment. And if they're in the environment, the celery turns purple. Yeah. And she says, what do you do then? He goes, I eat the celery. He's like, oh, okay. Um, and he sort of uses it. And this, he tries to, like, kind of help her amuse us. And there's like, oh, yeah. Christ's sake. Like, humans, to humans, this is literally just a bit of food. Bollocks. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, Not but, like, quite like that. But, but some of the best, two of the best cliffhangers in the show's history are in this story. Um, the fire three, episode. really, if you count the last episode, technically, because it is a cliffhanger. But yeah, the firing squad, mm -hmm. him commandeering the ship to crash land it into Androzani Minor. Because mm -hmm. he's basically just like screaming at the pirate guy and the guy's like going like, you yeah, turn it around! And the doctor even like carries on with what he was actually saying. He's like, shut up. And then he carries on with what he was saying. Mm -hmm. so he's basically saying like he needs to get back. If there's any chance to save his friend, he has to because I got her into this. So you see, you're not, I'm not going to let you stop me now. And it's like, Whoa! Whoa! This is one of the few yeah, stories. Okay, this is one of the few stories where I really get behind his doctor. Mm. He's not my favorite doctor, and it's not really down to Peter. It's more just this whole era. I don't. Mm. This is tied really to one. With it. This is tied to one other doctor's era as my least favorite era. And coincidentally, both doctors' names are Peter. But I just I don't I don't really care for it that much. But there are some gems like Planet Fire, like Resurrection of the Daleks, yeah. like Black Orchid. <sighs> Uh, like the Five Doctors, um, like the King's Demons. Like there were just so many. You go, damn, that's pretty damn great. Um, but this is the one story where I'm like, that's the doc. That is the Doctor. Mm -hmm. This feels right, and I yeah. think it's also the slimming down of the cast. It's Doctor and Companion. Exactly, two people. It's one who's never seen the universe because she's not an alien. Mm -hmm. She's not hanging out with two aliens who just sort of dis like dismiss her confusion. In one, in one thing, yeah. yeah. She, but she's she's. She's capable. She's plucky. She's a badass. She's realistically frightened when you would be realistically frightened. And in this story, she stares death in the face and still does what needs to be done to get going in the hopes that they'll be okay. She's brave. She's awesome. She is awesome. I love Nicola Bryant and I love Perry. Um, so when the Doctor manages to climb down the pits to do the impossible and get the milk from like the mother bat that's been hibernating thousands of years and it's an impossible cure, he gets hold of it doesn't have enough for two he gets Perry back to the TARDIS after everyone has blown each other like every every character in this story dies that, that they interact with every other character in the story meets a horrible ending even Shara's Jack who kind of like does the phantom thing sort of at the end of doing the right thing at the end out of his like love for Perry but you know still dead everybody's dead um Everybody's dead, Dave. And he gets back to the TARDIS and he gives the milk to Perry. Within moments, the rashes have disappeared. She can breathe normally. Mm. It's worked. Mm -hmm. He's dead. Yeah. Oh. TARDIS is... Uh, is it in flight at this point? I think it is. TARDIS is in flight. And he starts to regenerate. And he hallucinates. Kind of like the fourth Doctor. We saw him like mm -hmm. you know, hearing yeah. people say, Doctor! He hallucinates. All of his companions, all of his friends from this era... Including Chameleon, who, of course, disappeared last story. Yeah, not he, to mention. He, yeah, the Doctor killed him, essentially. Yeah, like, bye Chameleon, you son of a bitch. Expensive prop. Um, and then just before he passes away, obviously, like, them sort of saying, come on, Doctor, come on, Doctor, because he says, like, he doesn't know if he's going to regenerate. It's different this time. You think that he might, you know, him, his friends spurring him on in his imagination, in his head, is what's going to get him through it. And then who's the last face that he sees? Like as he begins to regenerate, like the the before he regenerates, the bloody master, screaming, die, doctor, yeah, laughing die, and being creepy, 
Um, but it doesn't work. Boom! I get goosebumps every time I watch this scene. I just think it's so well done. And again, just the direction. As the Doctor sits back up right in the foreground of shot. With suddenly a very, very new face. Um, Call you. And is immediately a sassy little bitch. He is. And Caves of Androzani's over. Best last story for a Doctor? So far? Yeah. Um, it was really, Tenth really Planet's good. fun. War Games is great, but it, it, it's two separate great stories. Mm. Planet of Spiders is great. Yeah. Um, Logopolis, not so much. Um, this, phenomenal. Like, just the look really? of it, the yeah. vibe. Yeah. Which is why it's odd that they end the series, <laughs> but then still did another story. <laughs> Lastly, let us touch upon the twin dilemma. So... Peter's gone. Colin's in. Um, he was right. Something is wrong. It's different this time. The Doctor is having essentially a breakdown. He's having a, mani a manic episode. I mean, at one point in this, in his wardrobe, he just, like, crumples into the, 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 like the, the hanging rack. maiden yeah. and cackles like a mad clown in a, in a horror film. It's like, oh my god. He's not quite right. He suspects Perry is is an alien out to get him. An alien and spy. spy. Don't even know who Perry say, is, do you, Perry? I, I, I must say, I now get a lot of um, Five Who fan jokes. That you didn't before. Yes. Having you watched, watched Colin. <laughs> having watched just Twin Dilemma. Exactly. Just yeah. you wait for season 22. <laughs> oh, um, so, uh, he picks out a costume. He, he keeps going on about how uh, handsome and, and debonair he is. And he picks out a costume that he thinks is suave and sophisticated. He's like, oh, I didn't like that last regeneration. No, 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 too... Sort of, yeah, I thought he was sweet. Sweet! Sweet! And I, I, I love the idea. I do love the idea of a new incarnation immediately going, oh, God, that's better. Oh, oh, I didn't like that. Because it's not like the Doctor's going, I didn't like who I was. It's this incarnation going, nope, nope, not a fan of that. Gross, horrible. Their tastes change. Uh, and by this point, it's kind of obvious that the Doctor is the same memory-wise. Like, their memory is the same. Sometimes they get a bit of amnesia, sometimes they get affected. But, like, their memory is the same. Everything else is different. Mm. And nothing says everything else is different. Like, the personality being so, so brash. And so openly Coffee. dismissive of their previous incarnation. Yeah, yeah. Um, we obviously see it in the, the multi-doctor stories, like two and three don't get on. It's like, why don't they get on? They're the same guy. But the, 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 the doctor is never not. quite the same person. Yeah, yeah. Like, they are, but Their they're not. Their personalities are different. Yeah, so I like the extremity of the change here. It feels like, oh, shoot, we're in a different era. New theme, like, new uh, visuals and the themes, mm -hmm. uh, the opening titles. Um, he's winking. Like, well, he's not winking yet, he's smiling. Uh, the wink comes later. Um, and it's just like, what is happening? God bless Perry. She puts up with some shit. She puts up with a near murder attempt. She puts up he with... He chokes her. Yeah, she puts up with the fact that, um... And she doesn't let him forget it. Like, no. she bullies him about yeah. it. And it's like, good, do. But the fact that he, he realises something's up with himself. So he's like, right, we're going to go somewhere secluded. I'm going to become a hermit. A hermit. <laughs> and it's like, okay... His ideas sound, he's like, I need to go somewhere calm, I need to reflect. But then every time he comes up with a decent idea in his grand way, he then adds, like, there's the, the there's then a and, er, uh, where you go, oh, God, no, 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 bring it back. It's he's like, and you will be my disciple! And you're like, no, don't take the girl you just met to live with you for hundreds of years on an asteroid and write down everything you say. Like, what is going on? Yeah. What is happening? I like it. Obviously, he's not going to do that going forward continuously. This is the regeneration story, the post-regeneration story. But it is just jarring, because suddenly, you, the viewer, are the only person in this relationship with watching the show and the characters in it who knows what's going on mm -hmm. and knows what should be happening. Yeah. And that's kind of an interesting back foot to be on. angle, yeah. Because Perry is like, she doesn't know. She's just getting used to it. She's never witnessed this before but he saved her life like the day before mm. so she's sticking with him she wants to make you can see it she wants to make sure he's going to be okay yeah 
and and that does go forward a bit like she's kind of his something that the 12th doctor and clara touch on literally just in dialogue the whole she's my carer she cares so i don't have to perry and the sixth doctor are like that mm. she's the person who has to turn around to people and be like yeah i'm sorry about him what's going on <laughs> do you know what i mean and that that's kind of we only really had that a little bit with tom mm. at the beginning um but the mission of this story is to make you feel offset with the Doctor and not like him. Which you didn't in this story. I don't like him, no. Did you... Two questions. Did you like Colin's performance in this story? Like, the... the, the I don't know. The, the bombastic arsehole and then, like, coward. The bit where it's like, it was all her, it wasn't me! And you're just like, whoa, what is going on? I don't like, know. I don't know. That ooh. I'm not... I'm, I'm kind of having the same thing that I had with... Oh, Okay. The teething, the teething we, issue with each new doctor. Yeah, uh, he's so different, and I really, really enjoyed the last story. Mm. And I really enjoyed Peter Davison and Perry. Yeah, you you wanted more Peter and Nicola. Yeah, they were amazing together. That last story was so good. That's what I was waiting for, and then it was ripped from me. Well, no, it isn't. After he died, he just looks different and acts different. So, he's, so it's different. And I don't like us. Meanwhile, two twins are kidnapped for their mathematical excellence and they wear pyjamas as well. There seems to be a pattern here in this show. And it turns um, out that they're both Adric. Basically. Uh, they're <laughs> taken by... What's the name of the bloody professor that's with him? I'll have to read up on him. But there's, they're nabbed by a professor who the Doctor knows. He's a Gallifreyan. Mm. And he was one of the Doctor's old contemporaries. And there's implications that... His fourth incarnation hang, hung out with this guy recently. They got absolutely smashed and he fell into a fountain. Because um, these kids are... They're, <laughs> Romulus they're, and they're, Remus. Yeah. They're so mathematically skilled that it's, they're dangerous. Yeah. And and their father warns them that, you know... you got to be taken people, care of because you know, shit's going to go wanna, real. You know, use that for a negative reason. And they're like, no, it'll be fine. We'll still be here when you get back. Yeah, but they're going to be put to use by the second slug villains of this this story. Uh, a slug villain who has subjugated a population of bird people who all had really interesting designs. Mm -hmm. uh, the people of Jaconda, who have been ruled over and managed by the Time Lord Asmiel, who is disguising himself as Professor Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. um, who is like, uh, to, so you want us to shift the planet to do X, Y, Z? but that in turn is going to kill three other planets around us, including their population. But I have to do it to look after my people, Doctor. So, of course, the Doctor, even in his post-regeneration state, is like, yeah, that's wrong. No. We've got to stop that. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, you dick. Um, it's kind of a straightforward story, but it's just... This is the second story that's relied heavily on the idea of maths is important and you can move mountains. Last time with Legopolis, like... Maths can rewrite the fabric of creation. Yeah. And in this, maths can move the solar system. And yet neither story has an application of maths in it that is graspable by its young audience to inspire them to be enthusiastic about mathematical study, mm -hmm. which is clearly why both stories have it. Yeah. It's to be like, hey, viewers, hey, kids. Maths is great, honestly. Believe us, like you study it, you can do incredible things with it. You can become like a computer scientist. You can work in different fields of medicine. You can work in statistics. You can become a freaking insurance guy and make millions. Like you know, you, maths could help you do so much. But both stories, like maths is important, right? How do you mean? Well, we're not going to explain it to you, but we're going to keep saying it. Uh, okay. The plot of this is boring. Mm -hmm. What makes this story interesting? is watching this erratic, you know, off his rocker, newly regenerated Doctor, who for the first time the regeneration has gone, actually gone wrong in some way. AWOL. Yeah, and his, uh, his only just joined the story assistant, who's determined to, like, essentially, she owes him her life, so she's like, I need to make sure you're okay. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, the story's boring, but a bull... In a color, a very colourful bull in a china shop is unleashed into the story, and uh, Perry's holding the lead, going "Jesus Christ!" Like being pulled <laughs> along by him. Um, I get the idea of having a character he's already met in it, because Asmael is sort of one of the few things that then makes him reconnect with himself. Mm. 
Like, Perry tries to keep him level-headed, but Asmiel's like, oh my god, it's someone I've actually met. Hi. And he suddenly, in those scenes, he calms down. He kind of becomes more... The Doctor. ...stable and the Doctor, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he improvises, like, an escape plan from the, the base that's going to explode. and You know, he's, he's, he's going for it. He, he, there are flashes of the man he's going to become in this story. But it's just so odd to think that they ended a season with this story. Weird. That, I mean, we've talked about this before, they don't really do finales at this point, because the yeah. show was, the show prior to the last couple series was on, like, for, like, Constantly. six months of the year. Yeah. So it just seems like a soap opera, and it's just, oh, that's the last of the current series. Yeah. Whereas now, it's two months of the year, two episodes a week, mm-hmm. and it has kind of this feeling of, we've got to go out on a bang, so that when you come back... Um, next year you're excited because it ended on such a high note um i mean series 19 what did series 19 end with uh i can't remember brain's melting but like you know series um i could look it up while we're talking so, you know series 20 uh ended with the king's demons fine but then technically the last story that year was the five doctors later in the year so it goes out on like a boom all right fair enough you know what i mean goes yeah. out on a high this one, yeah, hang on, let's double check season 19, because it's going to bug me if I don't remember what the last one, Time Flight, okay, maybe not so much. Um, but like, if they'd ended on Casey and Drazani, what an amazing taste to leave in everyone's mouth. Mm-hmm. And what an exciting cliffhanger. <gasps> new guy, what yeah, the exactly. hell? See you all in 10 that months. That just makes perfect sense to have a new Doctor start the new series. To I mean, pull everybody tease in. them at the end, like you did with Peter, yeah, and, exactly, and like you yeah. did with um, because you did with Tom. Like, like me... I've made a judgment on this doctor, and if I had the option, well, no, it, it, at the time, if I were to choose, I would probably not watch it because I'm not a fan of his doctor. Yeah, because your so, memory, when the next January rolls around, your memory would be, well, he was a bit of an arsehole, wasn't he? Because you've not been able to revisit it. It's not like you can yeah, rewatch yeah. it anytime. It's 1984. Yeah. So, you know. It's, so a, that, it's a bold it's choice. Like a strange that decision. It's a bold choice that doesn't quite pay off, but I'm slightly biased. Excuse me, Supreme Garlic. I'm slightly biased <laughs> because I I love what comes next. I really do. Um, and we'll get into it. So I, I'm more like, all right, let's go. Like, I can't wait now for us having filmed this later this week, like weekend or whatever you, is when we're going to be like, right, boom, next story, let's go. And I'm really looking forward to it. And then... We're going to take like a week and a half break before we, after we finish that series. Because we're going to do a bonus video about something that happened during the hiatus for and that I'm series. I'm excited for it. Oh, you regret those I'm words. I'm excited for the disappointment that is inevitable. Yes, but until then, season 22 is next. As for season 21... Uh, rough, rough, yay, nay, or eh. Warriors of the Deep. Nah. Uh, the Awakening. Yeah. Frontios. Meh. Uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. Yeah. <laughs> Play of Fire. Meh. The Caves of Androzani. Yeah. And uh, the Twin Dilemma. Meh. Meh. It's an odd one. It's an odd grab bag. The strongest stories are definitely these three buggers here. Um, Resurrection. Planet Fire and uh, and uh, Caves of Androzani. Caves of Androzani is hands down one of the best ones yeah. of the classic run. Well, you told um, me that, didn't you? That a lot of it's, people... It's been voted uh, a few times, even in the modern polls, like yeah. when you've got younger viewers like reading the magazines and voting for stories. And, like... I, and I get that. Yeah, definitely get that. So, yay to season 21 overall, I guess? Or more... Uh... Yeah, um, yeah, it was much better than the previous one. Are you sad to see the back of Peter? Yes, because I liked him as a doctor, but I really, really, I don't know if you noticed, really didn't like his companions. And I think he really deserved better. I wish that Perry had come into it much earlier. And I really didn't see the point of Turlo. Really didn't see the point. Um, So he took his shirt off. He took his pants off. (laughs) Nissa. (laughs) Nissa. Again, didn't see the point. She's, you know, not the actress's fault, but yeah, like Sarah's not really doing given doing a story. Job. And then Tegan, yeah, she 
she does have a reason and she doesn't quite but they they just absolutely killed it for me but yeah this series was better every not, element of the great, every element of the era just didn't play to the era's favors at all but i did but again yeah i did like peter and i'm sad that he went well you and will I, get to see him uh, twice more my dear once in an official thing, but you've got to wait till the new series till we get to that. So you've already seen that one, yeah, but it'll have, more, it'll have more of an impact now, I yeah. imagine. Uh, and once more in one of our bonus videos during the 90s. Uh, good luck with that one. Um, are you excited for this new series? Series 22? Are, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because there are some bangers in series 22, including the return of your favourite doctor at a story. Patrick Troughton's last appearance as the character is in the next oh, series, Patrick. as is Fraser Hines as Jamie on screen, oh. um, in a story with the Sixth Doctor and Perry and some Tarans, oh. uh, and also filmed abroad. What? So everybody's in like weird alternate outfits that mean they don't get too hot. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I've not got my hopes high. Uh, wait till you see the Androgum. They still won't be high, right? What? Uh, next series uh, kicks off with Attack of the Cybermen. We'll see you in a few weeks for that review. Bye. Goodbye. Change, my dear. And it no. seems not a moment too soon. An alien spy. Wow.